In this video, I'm going to discuss vending. Additional videos and references can be found at sbainvent.com. If you haven't already, I suggest that you look at the Shear and Moment Diagram reference page along with the Moment Area of Inertia reference page. The reason why is because you need to apply both when you deal with bending. To start off, bending consists of both normal and shear stress when the beam is being deflected. For this video, however, I'm only going to talk about the normal stress, which is commonly referred to as the bending stress of a beam. When you're dealing with bending stress, you have a certain stress profile, which you can see here. Basically, this profile states that the point farthest away from the neutral axis has the highest stress while at the neutral axis there would be no stress. To calculate this stress, you would use the equation shown here. In this equation you would have moment times the distance of the point that you're interested in from the neutral axis, all divided by your area moment of inertia. Using what you know about shear and moment diagrams, along with area moment of inertia, and the equation that I showed on the previous slide, I would like you to try to determine the maximum bending stress at the length L over 2. The first part to solving this problem is you need to determine what the moment is at L over 2. To determine this moment, you need to find the moment diagram along with its corresponding equation. Once you know what those are, you can determine that the moment at L over 2 would be negative 2,109 inch-pounds. Now, if you're not sure how the moment diagram and its corresponding equation was derived, you can find a problem like this one on the shear and moment diagram reference page. The next part to solving this problem is determining what the area moment of inertia is. Since this is a simple rectangle, the area moment of inertia would be very easy to obtain. And to determine the area moment of inertia, you would have 1 12th times base times height cubed, which would be 1 12th times 1.5 inches times 1.25 inches cubed, which would then equal 0.244 inches to the fourth. Now that we know what the moment is and the area moment of inertia is, we are almost ready to solve for the normal stress on this particular beam. The only thing left that we have to do is to determine what this constant C is. And since we're looking for the maximum bending stress, we have to determine what the maximum distance is from the neutral axis, which would run through the centroid of this part. Since this centroid is directly halfway through this 1.25 inches, this C could be plus or minus 1.25 divided by 2. And now that we know what C is, we can determine what the bending stress is. So the maximum bending stress for this particular case would be plus or minus 5.4 KSI. In most real world situations, you're not going to have a force that causes just a moment across the x-axis or just a moment across the y-axis. Instead, that force could generate a moment that is somewhere in between the x and y-axis. So in other words, it's a product of the moment across the x-axis and the moment across the y-axis. So to solve for this normal stress when your moment is in that type of situation, you would use this equation here. Also, due to the fact that the moment is between your x and y axis, your neutral axis is also going to orient. So, to calculate the new orientation of your neutral axis, you would use the equation shown here. Using what I showed on the previous slide, I would like you to try to calculate the stress on all four corners and determine the orientation of the neutral axis due to this 55 inch pound moment 35 degrees off the x-axis. 
Just like with the previous bending example, you have to determine what the moment is across the x-axis and the y-axis, as well as the area moment of inertia across the x-axis and the y-axis. So, for the moment across the x-axis, it would be 45.1 inch-pounds, and across the y-axis, it would be 31.5 inch-pounds. Now, for the area moment of inertia, across the x-axis, it would be 1.3 inches to the fourth, and across the y-axis, it would be 0 0.208 inches to the fourth. Now that I know what the moments and area moment of inertia are, I can solve for the stresses on the corner. First, though, I need to determine the distance from the centroid in the x direction and in the y direction, realizing that x is positive in the di this direction and y is positive going in this direction. So, at corner 1, both x and y are positive. So, my stress at corner 1 would be 42.0 psi. At corner 2, however, the stress is negative in the x direction but remains positive in the y direction, which will change the stress value to negative 129 psi. For corner 3, both x and y are negative, so my stress results as negative 42 psi. And for corner 4, my stress is negative in the y direction but positive in the x direction, giving me a stress value of 129 psi. Finally, I need to solve for the orientation of the neutral axis. To solve for the orientation of the neutral axis, I would use the equation tan alpha equals the area moment of inertia across the x-axis over the area moment of inertia across the y-axis times the tangent of theta. So, Alpha would equal the inverse tan of 1.3 divided by 0 0.208 times tan of 35 degrees, which will equal 77.1 degrees. So the neutral axis is 77.1 degrees oriented off the x-axis. So far, all I have talked about are beams that consist of one material. However, there could be a case where the beam may have more than one material. In other words, it's a composite beam. If it's a composite beam, the stiffness of one material is not necessarily the stiffness of the beam. Instead, the stiffness of the beam is based off of both materials, which would make it more difficult to calculate. However, there is a trick to get around this. This trick is to convert this composite beam into one of those materials. To do this, you need to have a ratio between your Young's moduluses of the two materials, or however materials that beam may, may be made out of. And from that ratio, you can change one of the dimensions, which in this case, I change the dimension B1 to dimension B2, where dimension B2 equals the ratio of Young's modulus of material 2 over the Young's modulus of material 1 times B1. The reason why the ratio is like this is because the Young's modulus of material 1, I am saying, is greater than the Young's modulus of material 2, which in turn makes sense why B2 is smaller than B1. So by doing this, I have essentially compensated for that stiffness and now this beam would have the same stiffness as this beam, except now it's all one material. So now you can solve it as if it was one material and use the techniques that I showed in the previous slides. That concludes this video. The next video will be about transverse shear stress on beams.